Joining us tonight, award-winning investigative reporter John Solomon of The Hill. Great to have you with us. Uh, John, this is you. your reaction to uh, last night talking on this broadcast with Joe to Geneva and right. uh, Victoria Tensing. Uh, their frustration was, uh, was palpable, and they yeah. have been patient uh, and, and are immensely confident of William Barr. But yes. even they were starting to, to feel a little... Uh, a little frustrated. Your thoughts about uh, what came down today and where it likely leads? Yeah, listen, we're one step closer to the possibility that Andrew McCabe, the deputy director of the FBI, might be indicted. But it is remarkable. This has been an 18-month process for a crime that the IG laid out in April of 2018 pretty clearly. He lied not once, not twice, but four times. It didn't take 18 months to indict uh, Mike Flynn. It didn't take 18 months to indict George Papadopoulos or any of the other figures in the Russia case. And uh, I think when people look at it, including people like Victoria and Joe, they see two things. They see justice, which normal people get, right. and then they see just us, which is the special treatment that sometimes Justice Department insiders get. It is remarkable. I've never seen this appeal process that we talked about today, yeah. but the news is, at least now, we're at a point where they're either going to indict or not indict. The next two steps are, if the Justice Department is serious, they will send a target notification to Andrew McCabe saying you're likely to be indicted. Then they'll go to the grand jury and they'll seek a bill, and either the grand jury will indict on charges or they'll pass on the opportunity. We should be at this long end of this national nightmare soon. I, it is. I, I am like every American, I think. Uh, I am uh, hoping that you are exactly correct in all of this. Uh, but even at that, uh, there's much to be uh, atoned for here uh, because the process has been uh, awful. Uh, mm -hmm. It has uh, set back a president uh, who is indomitable. Uh, so he's still a historic president. I truly believe this when I say this. Any other president would have uh, succumbed uh, to depression, to uh, fierce, uh, uh, maddening frustration, uh, or, or would have given up fighting. Uh, it has in some ways made this president even bolder, even stronger, yeah. and uh, certainly uh, every bit as effective as if he had no opposition at all. Yeah, I've had the pleasure in a couple of times, really in, in, in times when the president was in maybe darker times, you know, that things were looking down for him. And uh, uh, Donald Trump, if nothing else, is an absolute fighter. He doesn't stop. And I saw that behind the scenes in, in different interviews and things that over the last few years. That this is a man that keeps on fighting because he wants to do the job the American people elected him for. There's no doubt about it. Uh, more developments. Uh, you've yeah. got uh, new developments in the uh, uh, Christopher uh, Steele Steel. dossier. Uh, would you share that with uh, the Lou Dobbs Tonight audience? Absolutely. Uh, and so, uh, it's extraordinary reporting as always. Thank you. This is hot off the presses. So today, uh, thanks to the good work of Senators Grassley and Senators Johnson, we learned that there's a lot of new information. And the first information about potential misconduct uh, concerning that famous meeting where you and I have talked about uh, mm -hmm. October of 2016, Christopher Steele mm -hmm. at the State Department, week before the FISA warrant, Christopher Steele, the opposition researcher for Hillary Clinton, Tonight, we learned that the State Department Inspector General found evidence of anti-Trump political conduct by the players in that meeting at the State Department. He's referred at least one individual to the U.S. Special Counsel's Office for possible Hatch Act violations. That's some important news. Yeah. Here's some of the other news we learned. That same State Department that gave us Hillary Clinton's private email server, there was an official, John Weiner, who was using his non-official email accounts to conduct State Department business around oh, the time of these Christopher Steele uh, contacts. That's been referred. But here's the weird part. These, alleg these allegations only surfaced because these two senators pressed for information. The inspector general neither wrote a report at the State Department, so the chief watchdog didn't write about it, and he didn't interview any of the key players, Weiner, uh, Kavalak, the woman who met with uh, Steele, mm -hmm. or, or their boss. Uh, uh, and so there's big questions tonight about whether there's a cover-up of this information. If it weren't for the good senators, we might not know about it. Well, it, that is uh, extraordinary. Uh, it is also extraordinary, I, I, and I don't know what the circumstances are, uh, but very quickly, I, I can recall during a period of the Obama administration, I can't remember the link, in which right. they didn't even have an inspector general, for crying out loud. There was a long time where there were large vacancies. Right. I mean, these, guys, these inspector generals play an important role as long as they do their job independently. Uh, thankfully, tonight we've learned of some new misconduct, at least getting the light shined on it. Hopefully, there'll be justice there as well. John Solomon, as always, thanks uh, 
for all appreciate you do. It. We appreciate, appreciate it. it.